What's happening guys? So today I got a little treat for y'all. It's gonna be a little bit of a uh, showcase or review kind of deal on our heavy duty tow truck. Uh, somebody did comment they, they wanted to see it. Well, I stated in that comment, she don't see the light of day but about twice a year, which is why she's sitting in here kind of dusty. She hasn't been out in a little bit. Um, we keep her inside. She's in really good running condition uh, and it, everything stays good because the you know, sun doesn't get to be down on it. So let's start by telling you what this thing is. It is a 1996 Kenworth T600B and it has the Century 5030 T3 back in. It's a 30 ton recovery truck. Uh, we've got dual uh, planetary winches. Uh, I believe that is, uh, uh, it's not three quarter cable, but it's close to it. Uh, with a uh, integrated underlift, uh, we've got dual jack legs on the back. We'll get around to that. I'm, I'm a little limited on space here to show you guys, so bear with me. Uh, so that's, that's what this truck is. Uh, I'll start showing you guys everything on it here. We'll go box by box and uh, we'll see here. So we'll start with the, we're on the passenger side because there's not as much room on the driver's side. We'll get our way there. So the first in-cab sleeper box, yes, it does have a built-in sleeper. In fact, this truck has been kept so well up that the mattress and the sleeper is still wrapped in the original plastic. Uh, so in here, we just keep miscellaneous uh, garbage. We've got a couple of small airbags. Ratchets, bolt cutters, uh, sawzall, uh, miscellaneous tools, additional trash cans, some additional straps and ratchets, flashlight, a couple of pry bars, things like that. All right, let's move on to here. So in here we got uh, oil absorbent. We got a couple of recovery axle straps, fuel cans. Uh, here we've got some airlines. Uh, we're gonna have uh, quite a few of these actually throughout the truck, uh, but we've got some airlines here. This box here, we've got our uh, tool tray, uh, basic tools to be able to pull drive shafts, cage, uh, cage uh, brakes, uh, and do whatever stuff needs to be done. One tool that we do have on this rack, so I can remember what the heck it is, is this big guy. I'm not going to pull it out because this thing is giant. Uh, there are pressing uh, caps on certain uh, types of uh, trucks and they're almost like welded in when you try to take them out. This tool is awesome. Here, let me shine some light. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this tool is awesome, but the, this, this tool makes it so much easier to pull those out. Uh, I mean, it's almost like butter. And we just got some basic uh, hand tools there, a couple of knives, uh, wrenches. Nothing too crazy. It's not, you know, the whole snap-on deal, but we got everything we need done. We got air fittings, caging bolts, Things like that. Most of our general tools that we're using are relatively up here because they're just easier to get to. Um, so that's there. Uh, let's see. Next box back. This one here, we've got lumber. We have plenty of absorbent all the way around this truck. So you're going to see lots of bags of that stuff. Um, so we've got absorbent. We've got a couple of uh, flexi brake lines, trash cans, blocks of wood, uh, large blocks of lumber, additional straps, lots of straps. I uh, never really have enough of those. Okay, I'm going to do the flip down box. I'm not pulling anything out of this one because it's a pain in the ass. So inside here, we've got our light bar. Uh, we've got a creeper. And then all these pieces right here are actually part of a wheel lift system for this truck. Uh, we hardly ever use that thing. I've, I've set it up uh, once and it will break your back putting this thing together. All steel components, we're talking like the uh, the wheel grids themselves are well over 100 something pounds. Uh, so, yeah, it's not set up all the time. <laughs> Very rarely. We will fork most everything. All right, inside our first flip down box is pry bars. Oh, pry bars. We got a pry bar, shovel, broom, more lumber, aluminum angle. Uh, we have some axle caps on here somewhere. I'm not sure where they are. A uh, couple pairs of bolt cutters, bigger bolt cutters. Okay, so that's that one. Let me get around here. So this is the other end. This box goes all the way through. So this is the passenger side controls. There are no wheel lift controls, manual wheel lift controls here because 
we have a wired remote uh, and so that's all our wheel of control so when we're trying to hook up if we have to get down under there and watch we can pull this thing out and the wire goes quite a bit um, and this is pneumatic controlled so this whole system runs on air you hit the button air cylinders move these things for you you know she's an oldie she's a goodie still a good running truck so okay back here you can see we've got our underlift uh, we have uh, uh, hand rotatable uh, work lights glad hands um, five eighths I believe it's five eight safety chains in the pockets there and our jack legs there uh, dual winches um, we haven't uh, ran anything yet that this truck couldn't handle uh, we had a uh, fully loaded um, what you would call it though we had a fully loaded uh, recycling truck it's pretty much one of these things with uh, the roll-off bin on the back fully loaded and the guy creamed uh, creamed into a uh, Edison truck and uh, literally broke the motor mounts and the transmission mount on uh, the tractor and uh, we had to we had to drag it back we couldn't release the brakes couldn't do nothing without uh, getting under there and we were blocking the street so we just had to do something quickly to get going so we did that we drug it back and this truck did it no problem single line pull so that tells you something about the truck uh, I'll get in the cab last you guys get to see the cab last uh, let's see here, we walk around the front end of her, get back up, get a good picture of the front end. It's got uh, the dual headlights that KW came with back in the days, as well as uh, fog lights. Got a little remote controlled spotlight there. We have changed a few of those cab lights out, they're LEDs now. Uh, it was just more economical to get those. Uh, let's see here. We are running, what size tires are we running on this thing? Or two eighty five seventy five R twenty four and a half. So twenty four point five, twenty four and a half inch tires. Uh, she's got a twelve thousand five hundred pound front axle and dual uh, twenty thousand pound rear axles. Uh, pretty good, good sized truck. Uh, yeah, we're going to go there last. So here we got another uh, sleeper compartment. Here we just keep some additional tools, safety gear, clipboard, jump box. Uh, lockout tools, fire signatures in there. We got a couple of hammers in here too. Now this door's a little funky to latch. Uh, it's got a really good weather strip, I guess. All right, then we get to this side here. This is where we keep all the working brains of the operation. So all our forks on this guy. Um, generally, we're only realistically using these ones. As you notice, most of the other ones are still almost in brand new condition and a little paint wearing off. It's because most everything works on those. Um, we've got spring shackle forks. we got end caps here to do uh, uh, chain, chain picks. Uh, we carry bolts and extra pins. And in here somewhere we have a pull pin. Yep, right there is a pull pin. Um, one of two uh, wheel chocks and we've got a, a leverage bar there. Close that door up. All right, so here we got our chains. <laughs> Most of the time we're only using these guys. So we've got the big chains. I believe these are five eighths. Uh, and then we got everything down to three eighths and half inch to seven sixteenths uh, for the smaller shit. Uh, we have a ball attachment in here to do trailers. We also have the fifth wheel or a kingpin attachment here. This is actually two pieces. There's the fifth wheel plate there. And this also has a pinnel, uh, pinnel attachment there. So there, there we go. There's that box. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, here's a fun box. We carry lots of snatch blocks, lots of snatch blocks. Uh, I'm not gonna pull them out because these are old school snatch blocks. They're heavy as fuck. Uh, I believe we've got 16 ton snatch box in here as well as uh, a bunch of 8 ton and, uh, and uh, 10 ton snatch box. I don't know why he's got this in here, but we've got a, uh, an air, uh, air inflated jack there. This is the ball attachment. Uh, it's our uh, trailer airlines. More blocks of wood. You're going to see lots of these. We carry lots of wood. Uh, another tool kit. Uh, inside here we've got what looks to be... What the hell this is? Oh, he's got a snap-on work light in here. 
a little plug-in work light. He's got water boots. There are the axle covers I was talking about. Uh, we've got jumper cables here. These are actually heavy gauge cables. Really expensive as shit. More airline. I got a smaller jack there. Sometimes you don't need a big giant jack. All right, inside this box, we have our light cables. Uh, we actually have a small set of lights. Um, for some reason, the guy that drives this truck likes to use those more than he likes to use the light bar. Um, and then we've got our big cable for the big light bar. More oil dry. Uh, two big key things we carry lots of on these things is wood and oil dry. If we're showing up to a scene with this guy and there's a spill, it's going to be a big one. So, there's that. Um, last door, we don't have a door. Uh, somebody had an oopsie a long time ago. There's the smaller starter forks. Uh, those actually are probably what he uses, I think, the most out of. Uh, I hardly drive this truck. We got one guy that generally does. It rolls twice a year, so there's really not a need. Um, but uh, sometimes at night, I may get a call for it. Uh, usually, I'll do everything I can with my truck. I just This thing's a monster to pull out, and it's a lot more work sometimes than it is to use mine. So this side is the full controls. Uh, we got both our cables. Boom up, boom in, or boom up and down, boom in and out. These are the jack leg controls, so we can independently move each leg that uh, stabilizes the rear end up and down. And then these gauges here are actually showing us how much pressure is on those jack legs. Uh, throttle up and down controls, so when the truck is running, we can pull this and it'll raise the throttle. Um, we have dual air free spool winches, so we don't have to get up there and pull nothing. We just flip the switch and the cable comes out. If you've never pulled out one of these cables, I would suggest don't. <laughs> they uh, sometimes can take two people to pull out, especially if they're not coming out right. And then here's our uh, underlifter, as they labeled it, wheel lift controls. Uh, we have a fold down, we have a uh, in and out, and then we have an up and down. But up and down, actually, and we have an extend, we have an extend in and out, a wheel lift up and down, and a tilt. Okay, something's not right with that because we only have tilt on this thing. We don't. Oh, you know, no. Oh, okay. We have a dual tilt on this actually. So we have a fold up, fold down. It's been a minute, man. I haven't freaking hardly ever used this shit. And even then, I hardly ever use it. So we have an up and down, or you know, a tilt up and down. But this also articulates out. So this thing here actually has a knuckle right here where we can actually tilt it up on that axis as well as tilting it up and down with that so we have the fold up and down and then we have the tilt up and down and then we have the in and out on that all right hardly ever fucking hardly ever use that usually if i'm lifting i'll just boom up yeah. all right so that light bar that's up there that is from the 90s whalen has not made one of those things since like 96 that is the original lenses on that thing. It looks like it's virtually brand new. And yet again, that's because we keep the truck indoors. I mean, that uh, that, that really cuts down the UV on this thing. Um, so, you know, that's, that's an upside to it. Um, we usually keep it locked up in here, on the doors and everything. Um, which I'm gonna lock a couple of them on this side. All right, All right now we're gonna go into the cab. Don't be shocked. <laughs> so, she's a work truck. All right, all the controls for everything, uh, electrically on the back end are right here. We actually have electronic controls in here for the lift to be able to raise, lower, in and out, and all that shit. Um, we don't really use those. Uh, sometimes we use up and down if we're pulling it out of a driver, but usually we don't. Uh, so, Actually, it does work with the truck off. So there's the uh, the strobes. We've got strobes. Uh, the other beacon was for the rear flashers. Uh, we got multiple different front light controls because we have upper, lower, and then lower. Um, control is actually for the uh, control box for the uh, remote. Um, compartment lights. This lights up all the compartments, which I probably should have turned that shit on. Um, and then auxiliaries are for independent side lights because we have side lights on both sides of the truck if you can see those guys come on yep there we go and then we have i think one more auxiliary that just isn't used for anything 
air ride seat. I'm not gonna start this thing up because it's loud as fuck. Uh, yeah, as I said before, for exhaust. You know, for cats. Remember I said that bed has uh, the original plastic on it? Yes, it does. Uh, we generally do more storage back here unless I'm doing a ride along or something like that and we gotta take a customer inside. Then I will basically have to throw my happy ass in the back. Um, so she's got the old school tape, you know, cassette deck. Uh, window up and down controls, electric mirrors, CB radio, which uh, this day and age nobody uses a CB. Um, let's see here. She is an 18 speed, uh, both uh, dual range with high and lows. Uh, panel lights, controls. There's panel lights, I'm going to turn those on. Oh, I can turn the flashlight off. So. So all the controls to the stuff on the truck. We have the engine brake or jake brake. Uh, fog lights only come on. Actually, they do come on without the headlights. You just can't see them from this high up. Uh, fog lights. Then we have body lights. There's another switch there. Uh, we have idle control as well as cruise control. And then we have two spares, which I'll get used for shit. Um, this truck has uh, locking rear axles. Well. Actually, it has two drivable rear axles with an, you know, a, uh, a whatchamacallit, a intermediate lock that locks them together so that if uh, we get up like a curb or something like that and our main drive axle, which is the front one, uh, gets up off the ground, we can lock in our rear rear axle and keep going. It is a 4x4, four four, not a 6x6. Six six. And then we have an air suspension dump, which we realistically never use. Uh, in cab climate controls, PTO, engine fan, and uh, oh, yeah, this is the cab light button, so we can light up here in the cab. I always usually leave that off. All right, so if you guys don't know anything about these uh, size trucks, there are a lot of gauges, a lot of gauges, and the reason for that is you can see everything on the truck that's going on. Uh, on this one here, we've got a little uh, knob here for the panel lights. Okay. So right here, we have... Fuck, man. Alright, so this is turbo boost. This is amperage coming off the alternator. This is engine temperature, oil pressure, water temperature. This is engine oil temperature and oil pressure. Water pressure, or water temperature, battery voltage. Okay. Over here, and I'll come back to this one. I want to see how many of y'all know what a pyrometer is. Most trucks don't have this anymore. Uh, RPM gauge, speedometer. She's got about 18,386 miles. And a lot of miles for a really, really old truck. And then these are just indicators here left turn, right turn, high beam, check fluids. All right, so over here we got air pressure gauges. Okay, so there's our primary, our tank pressure gauges. This is our brake pipe supply. And then, uh, see here, this is, well, apparently this gauge is not working. Forward rear axle temp gauge, rear rear axle temp gauge, and then uh, air filter uh, pressure. This would be the uh, fuel filter pressure, air suspension air pressure, fuel gauge, and transmission oil temp. So fuel gauge, we'll, we'll talk about that here right now. Um, this, tank, this truck has dual 100 gallon fuel tanks with an auto crossover. So what that means is it's drawing from both tanks at the same time it's they're connected together basically okay uh, up here on the wheel we've got regular horn and i've got like no fucking air pressure so yeah air horn don't work right now um this is a uh trailer brake or a you know sissy brake um you can pull this back and only apply braking pressure light braking pressure just to whatever's connected to the trailer line. Um, 
Yeah, we're in California. We're not dealing with uh, slippery, slick roads that badly up here uh, in Southern California, so we hardly ever use that. Okay, uh, pretty much other than that, um, the air releases for uh, tractor park brake and uh, trailer park brake. Um, this is just all a bunch of warning lights up here that come on for different things. This is that uh, remote spotlight. I don't mess with that too much. So, the last gauge I didn't tell you about that uh, I was talking about and I wanted to leave till late. If you haven't figured it out by now, a pyrometer. Pyrometer is an exhaust temperature gauge. It actually is telling us how hot the exhaust is that's coming out the truck. And it's kind of a useful thing for a couple of reasons. One, if you're in an area where you may go boom by ignition, and you don't want to be in there with a really hot exhaust. It also tells us, you know, with the exhaust coming out hot off the engine, that there might be an issue with the engine. You know, if your exhaust is really, really hot coming off the engine, that engine is working really hard or something's not going right. So it's kind of telling us a bit there. That, that, that gauge gives us quite a bit of information um, as far as the engine's running because we should have a relative, uh, we, have, we have a relative area where we see the exhaust temperature coming out this thing. And uh, if it's bad, it's, you know, going to shoot up. Um, gee, I'm not sure what else here. I'm not trying to make this a long, drawn out video, but... Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, it's not that Jamie Davis's rotator or, you know, uh, O'Hare Towing's rotator with all their extra stuff. But all that stuff back there is the stuff we need to get the job done. We haven't really ever needed anything else on this. Um, as far as lighting goes, this truck has like bare minimum uh, emergency lighting. But usually with this giant thing in the way, the lighting is, a, you know, <laughs> the lighting is an afterthought. You're not getting through this truck. Um, y'all were looking at this thing here. This is an old two-way radio that just has not been taken out of the truck. It does not work at all. <laughs> and it never will. So let me shut those lights off. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, if y'all have any questions, I was trying to make this a quick video. Although going over a truck this size isn't always a quick video. So if y'all have any questions, feel free to ask it. Let me know what you think, or you know, if you have anything, you know, question about the truck or anything like that, ask me, and I'll try to answer. I lock this one. Now I gotta go around and lock all these boxes now. Oh yeah, and for anybody that wonders, this thing actually has four batteries because <laughs> it takes that much juice to start this thing. It has four 950 amp batteries. And it, that's, it takes a lot of juice to start this truck. It also has four air tanks for onboard air system. Um, it's designed to be a tow truck, so you, you need extra air and you're hooking up to trailers and shit like that. So that's the reason we have that. Um, pretty much it. Uh, the only thing I didn't show, and you probably saw it as I was walking around, is there are... Um, um, stack of cones on top and then we carry a few uh uh what you call it uh, mud flaps up there for rubber uh, pad protection uh but other than that that's it um this system here this wheel lift system i mean it's nice having the option but because of the sheer size of that thing and the weight that it takes to put those together we heart we rarely use it. i think we've used it twice since we've had the truck and if we've had the truck since it was brand new. So that tells you something. Uh, that tells you <laughs> tells you a lot of how much we like using the thing. We don't, you know, like I said, it's a nice option. I think the last time we used it was like three years ago. And it was a, uh, one of them old 80s cab over Freightliner tractors. The guy had uh, a front steer blowout or a tread loss on a front steer, and it had come up and ripped all his airlines out for the dryer and everything. Uh, so that right there, if you can see it, that's the air dryer. The air goes through there, and that kind of tries to remove some of the water out of it. Uh, but because of the way the front ends are on those freight liners, as well as the fact that he blew out the tire and then he ripped all the airlines out going to it. He had no way to 
main air. A lot of times we'll be able to pipe air to it and run the brakes off the air off the truck. Um, when that doesn't work, then you're under it and you're caging air brake after air brake can after air brake can. That's a lot of air brake cans to do. There's four that you're gonna have to cage. So anyway, please comment, like, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.